Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Pastor Jeff McCool. Glad to see everybody today. I'm uh, kind of trying a couple uh, new things here. Hopefully, we'll be up and running pretty quick. Um, if anybody can see me online, I'd appreciate it if you let me know because I can't see myself right now. Uh, so, anyways, I'm very, very excited uh, about what the Lord uh, is going to do for us today. And uh, can anybody let me know that I am online live? All right, here it comes. I see some people getting on right now. I appreciate everyone. Please, uh, if you don't mind, uh, share the video public. Uh, like I said, I can't see it myself, so there's nothing I can do about that. There we go. Give me one second, and I will get this thing out there to the public. Share. Post. There we go. Good morning. Uh, happy to be here today. Uh, what a beautiful day it is outside. I'm sitting by my uh, uh, big uh, patio doors and uh, just uh, enjoying the sunshine. Had a couple cups of coffee this morning, and uh, I'm excited to bring the word of the Lord to you. Uh, I've got a couple of calls recently because of some uh, things that you've seen online. Uh, concerning the conference I went to uh, down south, and I've had some minister friends call and ask about that. Uh, that conference uh, is called the International or IAF Conference. Uh, it is a, a not an organization, but a, a fellowship of uh, believers, uh, men who teach and believe the apostolic doctrine, and uh, I'm glad to be part of that fellowship. I am an active member there. Uh, it's hosted by uh, the general chairman, uh, Pastor Denny Livingston, who is also uh, probably my best friend in the world. And so uh, if you want to check that out, you can text or call me later. Uh, I've had two preachers that want to go to the conference and possibly see about being part of the International Apostolic Fellowship. Uh, I welcome all positive uh, feedback uh, or constructive feedback as well concerning my broadcast. and very new at this. A little bit nervous, but uh, I'm trying to just do the best we can do because I have no idea how long it's going to be before I can get in that brand new building God gave us and <laughs> five acres of property. So uh, also, uh, when this uh, is over today, if you uh, was not able to see it, uh, it will be on the church's YouTube channel, which is just Point of Grace Davison, and today's sermon will be on there uh, within an hour after I... Uh, conclude this broadcast today. Also, we're on live at 7 o'clock um, p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday, and I'm going to be doing a little devotion during the week. Maybe not every day, but I'm thinking Monday, Wednesday, Friday type of thing. Uh, I'm going to be going today later on, and I'm going to set up a little studio at the church uh, because my grandbaby is going to be here for a few days, and it will not be easy to record with them here. And I guess y'all can all figure that out. But anyways, welcome today. Glad to have you. I'm going to be get. Uh, uh, my daughter and I are talking about incorporating a little music uh, into the program next week and maybe uh, broadcasting live from the church. And uh, so I'm hoping we can make that happen. Uh, we would be glad to share that with you. And uh, a little worship and praise is uh, good for everybody. So uh, today I'm going to be reading from the book uh, of Exodus. Uh, chapter number six, something I felt like the Lord really dealt with me about this week because a lot of people, and I know it seems like everyone's focusing on current events. Uh, I get all of that, uh, but I do want to say this. Uh, it's important for us to know that God is with us, that he's going to keep us, uh, that everything's going to be okay. And if I, you know, Paul said, if I had hope in this life only, I'd be of all men most miserable. What a true statement that is. Peace and confidence come from knowing that you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So no matter what happens, we're still safe. And uh, that's not very comforting if you're uh, sick, I'm sure. So we want to pray for those today at the end of the service. Uh, I got a report of uh, some people who really need prayer, and I want to be sure and let everyone know that we're not here just for ourselves. This is for... Uh, anyone and everyone who needs the Word of God. I'm going to read from Exodus 
chapter number 6 today. Uh, in verse number 6, the Bible says, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Pay close attention. And I will bring you into the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it you for an heritage. I am the Lord. And Moses spake so unto the children of Israel. The Bible says, But they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. I want to address that for a couple of minutes today. Uh, anguish. Uh, I don't think I have to give you the definition of that. Uh, everybody knows what that is. Uh, it just means that uh, their spirit was disquieted. There, uh, there was no peace uh, in their hearts uh, because there was all kinds of things going on. Uh, spirit of fear, spirit of depression, uh, all kinds of things. This is after being under uh, the hard taskmasters and the people who uh, kept them in bondage in Egypt. Uh, even though they were free from the tyranny of Pharaoh, they were not free from the mental slavery that kept them in change. There's more than one kind of slavery. Uh, there's physical bondage, uh, uh, you know, chains, fetters, uh, whatever that might be. Uh, and then there's mental bondage. Uh, mental bondage can be very tyrannizing. Uh, however that came about, to you the first time, it doesn't even have to be there the next time because it stayed in your mind. So uh, I, I want to say this today, we have to be very careful uh, about making sure our minds and our hearts are clear and that we keep them focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, all the negativity, uh, you know, I watch some news every day to keep up with current events, then I turn it off and I move to things uh, that are of a positive note. I'm not sticking my head in the sand, but I can only uh, absorb so much of that without it affecting me. And if that's all you do all day, you're probably going to have what's called anguish of spirit. It's very easy to understand. They were physically free, but they were still bound with the chains of fear. They felt doubt. They felt unworthiness. They felt self-doubt. They felt abandonment. They felt betrayal. Uh, they felt the spirit of enslavement, and a lot of people uh, are even like that today uh, because of failures, uh, because possibly there was a loss in your life, you lost a loved one, you fell victim in a, in a bad relationship, and then that pain goes on and on. I have a, a sweet cousin who lives down south, and uh, she contacted me this week. I, I've probably not seen or talked to her in 30 years. And she was going uh, through some things. She lost her husband uh, a few years back. Her family moved off. She lives in an apartment by herself and down in southeast Missouri. And, uh, uh, you know, and she w was fighting a spirit of depression. And uh, I, I called her on the phone, and we talked for maybe 20 minutes. And I, I let her know how much we loved her. And, you know, you're welcome to call me anytime. Uh, if you're listening today, Teresa, you know that I was not kidding about that. Uh, we're supposed to be here for other people. But when you are alone and you feel like you have nobody else, uh, that is a very, very uh, precarious position to be in. I'm going to talk about a couple things today. Uh, I'm going to kind of go down through some notes and hopefully help you folks. I'm usually way more animated uh, and demonstrative when I preach. I run back and forth on the platform and spit on people on the front row and stuff like that, but I've had to change my method because I don't want to spit on my camera, which makes a lot of sense. The spirit of unworthiness, that is a lack of self-love and self-acceptance that a result, it is a result of an internal battle with one's own personal image. Uh, we need self-esteem. 
Uh, we cannot let other people set our value. That's up to God. When we feel unworthy, we're hiding beliefs that we are not good enough. We have fear or an an inadequacy and failure, which leaves us powerless. Listen close. This is a result of false mental image of perfection or holding to standards that are not realistic. Well, guess what, folks? I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes, uh, just like all of you have, so don't judge me today. Uh, so don't let other people tell you how to live. Your salvation is between you and God. The Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, other people will tell you how to live or tell you this is right, that's not right. Read the Bible for yourself. I, I uh, put a challenge out there earlier this week. It only takes 72 hours to read the Bible. That's a lot of reading, and it's very difficult to sit and read the Bible from cover to cover. I have not done that in one session. Uh, it, it's, it's too much. But you could take a little bit of time. Uh, the more of the Word of God that you absorb and get in you, uh, the happier you're going to be. I can promise you that. Sometimes we harbor uh, hidden feelings of unworthiness because we feel separate and that we do not belong. Uh, that's an age-old trick of the enemy to make you feel like. And I've actually had people who have left the church I pastor, uh, and I want to say this today, I pastor an open-door church. Uh, if people don't want to stay, I don't fight them. Uh, I don't beg them to stay. Uh, I got some people mad at me one time because when they left, I asked them if they wanted a gas card, but that didn't go over well. Uh, Y'all know I'm just playing, right? Uh, if somebody doesn't want to be at your church, why would you restrain them? You're only hurting the church and them as well. So people are welcome to come. People are welcome to go. Uh, so uh, we feel separate and that we do not belong and that we did not rise to achieve goals that were thrust on us by other people. Well, there's the problem. Uh, don't set your goals according to other people. Uh, it's easy for me. Uh, I, I have a little joke going with my with my uh, pastor friend and cousin, uh, Brother Denny Livingston. He pastors a very successful work down in Tennessee, and uh, God has been very good to them. They uh, just a couple years back were able to sell their building by a beautiful place uh, uh, over in an incredible area of Nashville. And when they got all moved in, they were totally debt-free. And I always tease him, and I, I call him Moses or Baby Moses, and, and that I'm just a little guy trying to follow him around. And we kind of cut up about that. Uh, I can't buy everything other churches can buy. Uh, my congregation is as big as uh, uh, everyone else's congregation. I have a cousin who pastors in St. Louis, he has five campuses, and they run over 20,000. So uh, my church runs 60 on a really good day. Uh, but we're going to get there, I can promise you that. God's been very good to us. Uh, but I want to say this. If I compare myself to someone who runs 20,000, I might as well go back to bed. Uh, you know, you can't do that. God has you where you're at for a reason, more than likely. And uh, what we have to do, rather than worry about, where, every, where everyone else is at and what everyone else is doing is embrace what God has given us and do the very best we can do with that. Somebody say amen this morning. I kind of felt something when I said that. Uh, you know, this kind of a spirit uh, is, is, is a, lives in a cavern of darkness. Uh, clear your mind of that stuff. Don't worry about it. Do the best you can do. Be the best uh, you can be. We have to displace that darkness with light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Isn't that inspiring today? Uh, the spirit of fear is the feeling of being afraid of some kind of threat or danger, whether it is real or imagined. Uh, sometimes we let things go. To, first of all, how many of you all out there have ever been afraid before? Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, I've had people scare me. Uh, I'm kind of a jumpy person anyways. Uh, one time I was walking down our hall, you know, and we have cement floors, you can't hear nothing. And my wife come out of the bedroom, and I think she just washed her hair, and it was hanging down over her face, 
And when I saw her, I screamed like a girl. Uh, uh, you know, I, I thought it was Linda Blair. <laughs> it, just, it rattled me. It caught me off guard. Fear is a very natural thing. But if you dwell on that, uh, it becomes a spirit. And that spirit can only be broken when we give it over to the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Bible says he has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of love and of a sound mind. So uh, a fear response is actually a sympathetic nervous system initiates a physiological reaction in response to a perceived harmful event or attack. Not everything is real. Uh, sometimes fear can become so real and you're afraid of nothing. Uh, it, you got it in your mind, you stirred it up, uh, you let it simmer for a while, and then all of a sudden, uh, there you are, and it wasn't really even going on. Listen to this. Romans 8. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Uh, anything else besides that is an imposter that hitched a ride in your mind. Cast that out. We have the power and authority uh, to pray. We have the weapons that the Lord has given us, uh, mighty weapons that are not carnal but mighty through God for the pulling down of stronghold and casting out all imaginations with a, which exalts himself against the knowledge of God. I hope I'm helping somebody today. I hope somebody is listening to me and saying, you know what, Pastor Jeff, I'm not going to let the enemy mess my mind up today. Uh, I already told you I'm going to venture out of the house. I'm going to get in my car. Uh, I'm going to go uh, to the church alone uh, for uh, just a little while to spend some time uh, doing some stuff over there. I'm not going to huddle in a corner uh, and uh, you know just sit and tremble all day because I don't have to live like that. Listen to this, 2 Corinthians. This is awesome. Uh, I don't know how long I've been on, but I'm going to go for this. Uh, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. I'm, I'm preaching because I've studied my notes so long before I get to them. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bondage is anything that fastens or restrains a subject to slavery. The basic concept in Hebrew and Greek words translated bond or bondage means loss of freedom. Loss of freedom kind of connotes that I have giving myself servitude over to something else. I do not have to live like that. Uh, uh, many, many years ago when I got saved, I think it was October 17, 1975, at the Apostolic Church uh, uh, in Auburn Hills. Back then it was at uh, 1410 University Drive. Uh, I was a long-haired uh, hippie, uh, bell-bottom pants, platform shoes, ounce of marijuana in the glove box of my car and a 12-pack of beer laying in the floorboard. Uh, had an earring uh, in my ear. This was before y'all even knew how to wear them. Uh, and uh, I was fearful, uh, but God saved me. I got baptized, and he filled me with his Holy Spirit. And I remember uh, I moved to Arkansas immediately after that, and my, my bishop, my pastor, Pastor Spencer McCool and Aunt Joyce took me into their home, and they helped me get recover from uh, drug and alcohol addiction. And I used to have horrible, I'm telling you, realistic, lucid nightmares. Uh, every night I would wake up screaming in the middle of the night, and I would upset my uncle's whole household. Whole household. He had a, a, a small uh, girl at that time, Alana. Uh, Spencer K was very young and. Uh, Coco had not even been born yet. But I would wake up screaming in the night and scare everybody out of their wits. And I'll never forget one night, my bishop, Pastor Spencer McCool, he came into the living room because uh, I was sleeping on the couch at that time. It's all the room that they had. But they loved me enough to invest in me. And 
He said, Jeff, he said, uh, we can't do this anymore. We can't live like this anymore. And he uh, told me that uh, he was going to pray for me. And I'm going to tell you all something. I'll never forget that prayer. It's been over 42 years. And I knelt down beside the couch, and he put his arm around me. And he prayed a prayer like I've never heard in my life. It was anointed. It was power-packed. It was full of the Holy Spirit. And I remember him casting that demonic spirit. That, that demonic spirit was because of my drug addiction, because of methamphetamine, because of uh, 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 I was a PCP addict. And uh, that just tried to control me and drag me back in. Uh, to my former lifestyle. The first thing I did when I got saved was I left Michigan the same night because I, I just I had to get out of this environment. I couldn't climb out of it by myself. I needed help. Uh, w- number one, you can't do this by yourself. You need somebody else. I made myself vulnerable to somebody else by placing myself under their care and direction. But he prayed that prayer, and I can promise you I can't say I've not had a bad dream because I've had a couple of those. But in 42 years, I have never had a nightmare because my pastor's prayer overcame that spirit and that spirit had to leave me. If you don't believe this is real, you need to pick up a Bible and read it. Uh, You you need to delve just a little bit more into God's holy word and, and, and find out uh, how real this thing really is. So, uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that the Israelites, under Egyptian bondage, hung their hearts in a willow. They did that because they got discouraged. Uh, they they were music makers. They they loved to to worship. They loved to sing. They loved to praise God. But after a period of time, during the time of bondage, they become so discouraged, they didn't feel like playing anymore. They didn't feel like exercising their gifts anymore. They didn't want to teach Sunday school anymore. They didn't want to be an active part of the church anymore because the enemy stole their victory. (laughs) I just want to say this today. Don't let anybody steal something that God gave you. That's mine. That gift is mine. The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. And I want to tell you something. Uh, I I love this old Ty Tribbett song. It says, I want it all back. (laughs) Anything the enemy has taken from you, go to the enemy's camp and get it back. You have that power and that authority today. Whatever we bind on earth, the Bible says, will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Uh, The the demoniac at at the... uh, uh, at Gadarene, uh, he was bound with chains, had so much physical strength, they said they couldn't bind him with chains or fetters. But when he saw Jesus coming, the Bible says he ran to him, and he acknowledged them for who he was. See, because the spirit of fear cannot exist in the presence of Almighty God. It can't live there. It can't dwell there. So get your heart back down out of the willow. Get the gifts back that God promised you That's because they're still yours. They may have been on hold for a while, but step back up into your destiny that God has called you to and accept that right now. Revelation 20 and 1. I think I'm getting close to the end of this. I'm having a great time teaching today. And I saw an angel come down from the heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that's the enemy, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And he bound him for a thousand years. He cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose just a little season. I have the authority to bind that spirit because I myself am spirit-filled. I know that your past is a legitimate part of who you are, but it should be used as a tool, lessons, guides that brings us to a better place in the Lord. If you're struggling with that today, 
you cannot alter your past. That's, that's, that's not possible. But your future has not been written. Uh, how powerful is that today? That means if I will get the right mindset, if I will get it in my head, that I can change things just by changing what goes into my mind. If you fill your mind full of garbage, if you fill it full of negativity, if you fill it full of propaganda, if you fill it full of, of, of false doctrine, then you're going to be errant, and you're never going to be happy. And, and I, I, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I, some people just can't seem to find happy. It, it's, it's so elusive. You know, no matter where they're at, they're never happy. It's probably because they don't understand that without a relationship with God, uh, life isn't really happy. It it is an illusion. Uh, the 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 soul of man cries out to the Lord. So no matter what you're doing, that thing that God put in you is always reaching out to Him. Uh, I can remember years ago when I. Uh, played music uh, professionally. Uh, my brother and I were in a band. We used to play at the, a place down at, uh, uh, I'm probably going to forget that. It'd be M59 and Woodward, I think. And it was called the Wide Track Inn. And I, I had this big PV amplifier that's about six foot tall. And, you know, I used to put my beer back on there when I was playing. And uh, I can remember God messing with me when I was in the nightclub. And I would feel a power of conviction, knowing because of how I was raised, that I really wasn't supposed to be up there doing that. But because my mind was messed up w with things that were altering, uh, I chose that lifestyle and stayed in it for a while. I'm so glad today that I've been delivered from that. And, and, and I want to say this today. No matter what your addiction, no matter what your problem, uh, God can deliver you. He wants to do that. I promise you he does. I know there's people who are watching and listening today, uh, even people that I pastor, uh, that you shared with th things with me, obviously that I will take to the grave because uh, I'm a confidential person. Uh, I applaud you today when I see you get up and worship God and raise your hands to Him and magnify Him, knowing where you came from. See, knowing where someone came from sometimes helps you understand why they are and how they act today, who they are. And so don't ever judge somebody uh, until you know their past. Uh, I say that reverently today. I, I use my past to help me uh, inform my future. Uh, I don't let it impede my destiny. I'm going to close in just a minute here today. I just I just felt really glad to say some of these things uh, this morning. Uh, I hope that God has reached into your homes today. Um, this is awkward for me. Uh, it, you know, I'm nervous about how do I look? Is there enough light? Is it loud enough? All those things. This is a learning curve. Don't forget, even though I look young and handsome, I'm 65. And I'm having to learn new technology. Um, uh, you know what they say about old people, don't you? Say they're like concrete. Uh, they're thoroughly mixed up and permanently settled. <laughs> On a few things, I promise you I am that. But I'm doing anything I can do. I pastor a wonderful church. I pastor a wonderful group of people. And you have any idea how bad it hurts me that I cannot gather with them right now? Th that I cannot... Uh, give people hugs and, and uh, you know, go to church and watch people pray and cry and come to the altar and, and, and yeah, go out and eat when it's over. Uh, yeah, that's what we do. It, it, you know, I miss that life. But no matter what happens, uh, someone, I saw a shirt someone was selling. I, I'd like to get one. It says church had left the building. <laughs> and for now... Uh, Church has actually left the building. If I let myself, I'd wonder, now, why did God let me buy that building and that property, and now all of a sudden we can't go there? God's got a reason for everything. Uh, I'm, it rains on the just and the unjust. 
I know within a few weeks or a couple of months possibly, we will be right back at 71, I almost forgot our address, 7184 Davison Road, Davison, Michigan, and we'll be hooping it up like we always do. God is so good. He is so faithful. God bless all of you today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate uh, you uh, tuning in here. Uh, we'll be back live at 7 o'clock uh, Wednesday uh, p.m. and uh, for our Wednesday night Bible study. And also I do uh, plan on doing a short live video uh, tomorrow morning uh, at around 9 o'clock. Just a little word of encouragement. Uh, please come back and see us. Leave us any uh, constructive criticism. I, I don't mind. I, you know, I know there's people going to say things and uh, it, it, it don't matter. But uh, leave us some criticism. But right now, before we close, uh, I'm not going to close my eyes because the Bible says to watch and pray. I pray for everyone who sees this video. I pray for everyone right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to keep his hand of protection on every one of you that uh, we bind the spirit of fear this morning. We take authority over anything that would cloud you or make you afraid. If you know anyone who's sick, uh, possibly some people in Arkansas, we have a lot of relatives down there. I, I read a little while ago a tornado came through there. Uh, I was actually where the tornado was in, in Nashville by a mile just a few weeks ago uh, when I was at the conference. Uh, these are very trying times. A lot of people... Uh, have been going through some things. But I ask the Lord to bless you right now, put an anointing on you and your family to bless the four corners of your property and dispatch angels there. I say that a lot because I believe in that, that they will give you divine protection. I pray for your health and your prosperity. And, and you know, maybe we ought to refocus and kind of think about what's really important today. Um, my family, nothing more important than that. My relationship with God, nothing more important with that. Uh, it, it, you can't get any more important than that, so make that your focus. Uh, the economy will come back. Uh, you know, everything's going to be all right. I believe that right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thanks, everybody. God bless you, and you, we will see you again soon. Pastor Jeff, over and out.